Right, so the World Championships was today, the men's time trial, which I'm going to go over. I'm going to go over the women's tomorrow. This is just a quick video. I'm actually at Belgrade Airport um, and waiting for my flight home from the tour of Serbia. Uh, but anyway, a shock winner, a uh, bit surprising, not going to lie, to be his Voss winning. Obviously very strong in the past, had won Tour de Lavenir, etc. But definitely not someone who was on the hot favourites. Um, Kung, unfortunately, again, just really has come, you know, very close to big, uh, big results like the Olympics. He was very close to a podium as well as the World Championships last year and the Europeans. Uh, Remco, good result, but nothing mental. Ethan Hayter, outrageous result considering the mechanicals. And then Ghana with a shocker. Obviously hard to say shocker. But anyway, um, a rarity, I would say, is that we have the numbers from the World Championship ride. So we'll put his weight in. I think he's about, people said, maybe 74 kilos or something. So, you know, nothing nothing too crazy heavy for the numbers that are been produced so it's a very technical course we'll, we'll zoom onto the map first now you can see there's apparently i believe there are 28 corners per lap which means in reality there's 56 corners as they do the, the course twice so unfortunately there's no segment and the wi-fi here isn't great so it's, it's going to be a bit, a bit tough for me to create the segment so it's harder to compare uh, each of the guy's efforts. However, we can see here the normalizer is 430 watts for 40 minutes, which again is not it's not bonkers. Like it's good, obviously, um, with an average of 5.6 for 40 minutes. But on a standalone TT, I wouldn't say that's something which is like ridiculous. It's just decent. But what is important is to look at the bits where they can produce the power. So you can see here they're going past the coast. It's sort of falls flat uphill, maybe some downhill um, as well. It, it's well, it looks flat here, but I can show you that, like this bit was definitely uphill as the drop in speed but 440 here six watts per kilo is big and he's a pretty aerodynamic human as well um again this is this is the first climb which is mount usley um i don't really know how that's pronounced uh, i'm not australian um but seven watts per kilo on the first climb is pr pretty much what you expect um there are a couple of other climbs like um where the segments were which is like the first seven minutes which i'm pretty sure was this little drag here you can again see like six watts per kilo um so pretty consistent to be honest um and in this climb again it's interesting to see the pacing again. So seven watts per kilo um, on the minute climb. And actually, if you look at the time difference between them, a minute 12 on the first one, a minute 12 on the second one. So clearly he was very within himself because he didn't actually like fade too much, which I think was an easy thing to do on this course because, okay, okay there's a lot of time to rest in between the corners. There's also like it's very punchy so if you really go into the red too much you're not gonna be able to punch over the climbs and you're gonna lose a lot of average speed um like going into the final bit here you can see again 455 watts if anything he actually negatively split it because on this part here you can see like 437 and here is 450 well, sorry I've got the zeros in like 452 so really really strong pacing from him um and then like if we go sorry just the second lap here so the second lap was 430 watts um, and the lap, the first lap was like 4.23. So very, very evenly paced. You can see again, the peak five minute power is at the last bit, um, which is interesting. Okay, there's super high speed here, so maybe not the best use of it, but also shows that he's varying within himself. And I think that's something that maybe people like Ganna, who really exploded on that last climb, he wouldn't uh, appreciate. And you can see here even like with the 25 watt split, which I don't normally show, but you can see there's a good two minutes of pedaling. Oh, sorry, basically freewheeling, which is quite a lot in a time trial. Um, quite impressive, really. Um, and then you can see here again, some decent power numbers. Like you wouldn't expect so much power to be spent, especially at six, 700 watts on, on like a normal sort of maybe dual carriage flat, dual carriage way flat TV, uh, sorry, flat TT. Um, again, you can see this less important is this threshold accurate. Um, but yeah, that's really what, what I wanted to go through straight away. Um, unfortunately for the women's, there just is no power data, but I will make an analysis um, tomorrow when I have more time. Uh, this was just a quick one to get out because it's very rare to have it. You can see Bruno Amarai. I also looked at his data as well. So you can see here, um, good numbers as well. Like, you know, technically better watts per kilo, but obviously that's not too important. Um, he's obviously not as aerodynamic, but you can see on this last part here, still 410 watts. So like six watts per kilo-ish, um, but you can see here 420. So definitely, you know, maybe not the best pace thing and i think that's really hard you can see seven watts per kilo one minute 18 only a second slower on this so actually again like paced pace pretty decently um but yeah just you know that's the difference in the watts and the watts per kilo um not you know obviously not that important but it's more like watts per cda and you can see the five minute numbers like not the same 432 um and i think that goes to show Foss really drove it home especially on this last section which i think was super super impressive from him 
Um, but anyway, those are my thoughts on the individual time trial, um, the men's race. I think too short in my opinion, but still, I would have liked to see Hayter without a crash, uh, sorry, without a mechanical and Magnus Sheffield without the crash. But apart from that, it looked like a pretty solid race. How would Wout Van Aert go? Well, I guess we'll never know because he didn't turn up. Anyway, cheers for watching. Sorry for all the background noise. Obviously, I'm filming at the airport. Uh, but anyway, I'll see you in the next one.